What's good, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Humble Warrior. Back at you guys again with another video. Um, so, I watched um, Dougie Do Wrong's video about uh, the situation with Tua and his contract um, situation that's currently going on. Where he stands, how the Dolphins feel about him, and so on and so forth. It's very obvious where the fan base stands. You got it's half and half. You got some that that want him to stick around as a quarterback of the future, and you got others that are that are pleading with the Dolphins to draft Michael Penix to eventually replace him as the the future heir to the Dolphins franchise. So you can say things are split down the middle, but here's my take on it. And I said this before in a previous video. If I'm the Dolphins, I'm going to make him play on that fifth-year option. Reason being because I want to see if he has taken that very next step needed to be a franchise-caliber player. Do I think he can be that? Yes. Do I think he can eventually be better than Joe Burrow? Yes. Justin Herbert? Yes. Patrick Mahomes? No. Uh, Lamar, Lamar Jackson? Yes. I think that Tua can actually be a top tier, like top two quarterback, right aligned with Patrick Mahomes. Now he might, he's not gonna win as many Super Bowls as Mahomes has already gotten, but who's to say he can't win two or three? Who's to say that? We don't even know. Because his peers has not won hardly one. The only the only person that's won a Super Bowl is Mahomes. Outside of that, in his in his draft class, no quarterback has won the Super Bowl yet. Joe Burrow and Justin and Joe Burrow and um, Jalen got the closest because they went to a Super Bowl, but they both had the same result. They lost. So with that being said, it shouldn't be a situation where he's basically overstepped or overlooked because it's been four years. And as they say, you know, that's enough. If you really be fair, the first two years, he didn't even have support. He barely had an offensive team. Now the last two years, he the first year he had to build up, he had to build that chemistry with, with Tyree. It, it was evident by the way he was throwing the ball, by the way the deep ball was being delivered, and everything. And he got criticized at every turn for his inability to throw the deep ball or throw him in stride and blah 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 blah. Last season he blew him out the water. His deep ball was one of the best in the league. And his numbers shown his numbers showed that. All we need him to do this season is to duplicate what he did stats-wise, reduce the inter inter interceptions, and go and win a playoff game or two, whether that be both at home or one at home or one on the road. No matter how you do it, as long as it get done. But even with that being said, as far as his contract dispute goes, I think the fair ballpark range for him is $120 million. Um, I would probably say four years, $125, $130 million with like, you know, $60 or $70 million guaranteed. That's kind of a low ball price, but at the same time, you at least get to keep the nucleus of the team together. You're not giving up heaven and earth to keep two and then everybody else falls by the wayside because you still got other players you got to pay. So, and because of Tua's DNA and the way he is, I don't see him doing what Deshaun has done or other players not saying, you know, Mahomes, I don't think he, I don't think Mahomes bickered about his contract either, but I don't see Tua saying, oh, pay me $200 million or I'm walking or whatever. That's that's not who he is. But to be fair, like I said, between the range of 130, 120 to $150 million over four or five years, that would give the Dolphins enough time to one, possibly grab a Super Bowl or two Maybe, maybe even a third, and then two to solidify the team built around him because you can now go pay Waddle, you can re, you can pay Hill, you can pay the, some other um, player that's probably either developed very well or that's turned to a viable third option on that on that receiving unit to where he can stick around as well with good money, and you can also pay the guys up front, his running backs, the defense, special teams. Anybody else that may be looking for, for a decent amount of money, you could do that through the charity strategy of Tua's contract. Meaning that if you don't if you don't pay Armor Lead like like the Sean Watson deal, Cleveland's screwed. 
I don't want Miami to put themselves in this situation. Is Tua worth $230 million guaranteed? No, he's not. But after next season, we don't know what his value is going to go up to be. And Miami would be stupid if they go and draft Michael Penix and then say, oh, well, we're going to let Tua play this fifth year, then we're going to let him go in hopes that we found our guy in Michael Penix. Because Tua is not going to get traded to a sorry-ass team. If he throws a fifty-five, or if he throws a five thousand yards and like forty touchdowns, he's going to a winning team. Somebody's going to immediately say, "Hey, that kid can ball. Let's let's go get him." We are a quarterback piece away from making this a Super Bowl winning team. So he's not going to go to a to a a team like the damn Arizona Cardinals, the Carolina Panthers. None of that. He's not going to go to a team where they're nowhere near contention for a Super Bowl. He's going to go to a winning organization that's going to literally build that offense around his skill set along with what they have available at playmakers. And they're going to go, they're going to put what's necessary around him to go get a ring. And Miami's going to feel so dumb because you refuse to pay the kid what he's actually worth or what he has shown that he is worth. Now, the, the friendly deal, like I said, is the four year 150 million. Because Jalen Hurts got almost, I think his contract, he, I think he got a hundred, almost a hundred million guaranteed, and his like over oh, four years, I think. So all his money in the back end, it ain't no money, because he got paid all up front. Now they're gonna be expecting him to have a splash year this year or coming up soon, because he had a shitty year last year. He really did. By his play style, he he had a really shitty year, but I think that the Dolphins will do right by Tua. I don't see them just letting them go after the fifth year and I don't see them also drafting Michael Penix because I don't think Michael Penix is the answer. Like like Doug said, they can go get Jimmy G. He's a viable backup. He can compete with Tua. He can also, you know, come in and relieve him and if they, let's say the Dolphins win 13 games and they just they let Tua sit out. Jimmy G can win you at least two. He went two or three so they could finish the season at would it be 14 and three or you know 14 and three so that's just hypothetical here but he can win at least two of those two games for you and then you have a viable backup to to it just in case he goes down that can actually still keep the offense rolling or they can go get other players i mean i really wanted i i thought that they would have they would have wanted and got a proven veteran that has done it that's you know that won't take away nothing from the team and that will guard it and give it their all no matter what i'm not saying get these scrub quarterbacks you know like um what's that boy named tyrod taylor no um baker mayfield would have been a decent i think he would have been a decent backup to it but he wanted he wanted to be a starter so now he's and Tampa bay has paid him good but now you're in a no now you're in a no man situation where you might have to draft a quarterback again. That's why I said Tyler should be he should have been elevated over Mike White because I think I mean, not Tyler Skyler should have been elevated because I think that he still played a decent year when Tua went down. He didn't have the greatest, no, he didn't. He was also a rookie. He was a seventh round draft pick. He was a rookie, so the expectations of him were not high at all. Even though people had even though people skyrocketed the expectations by thinking he can actually win a playoff game, which he came close. He came very close. So I'm not going to sit here and, and poop on the, on the dude. But to his contract, more than likely will get done. It's just a matter of when. And the, the matter of what will, will the contract say, what will the numbers be, and how people choose to respond to it is going to be the next question. Because I'm pretty sure he's going that that situation going going garnish a lot of negative attention behind what they decide to sign him for. So it's going to be really a shit show in itself. But then again, it's going to be like a relief for those who believe in him. And I already know it's not like he's not going to show up to no OTA, no training camps, or nothing like that. Because he already said he's out on a mission to work on four important things. And once he set his mind of what he's going to work on. Every season he's done it, he's only been in the league four years. Every year he's gotten progressively better. 
And that's the one thing people can't say that he hasn't done. The only thing people knock him about is December and January, which I'm almost certain now he's about tired of hearing that shit. I'm pretty sure now he's ready to deliver in those two months because... Because I'm pretty sure he's tired of, you know, playing those role playoff games when they could be in Miami and 80 degree weather, you know, giving people the business at home. So let's just cool it on these, on these, you know, what if scenarios or whatever. I mean, we still got the draft around the corner. We still have other things to do. So let's see what happens with, with what they discuss or what they come up with. That's just my take, guys. I mean, I still want him to be a Dolphin. I want him to sign a nice contract. I just don't want them to kill themselves in the process. Which I'm pretty sure the Dolphins are smart because look at Christy Wilkins. He went to the Raiders for over 100 and something million dollars because the Dolphins were not willing to give him that money. Because they signed nine players in his spot and his salary cap spot that filled a lot of pieces. You see that? Now, you do take care of your quarterback, but you don't over overcompensate for him. Because, like I said, look at what Cleveland did to themselves. Now, how are they supposed to come back to the board once these other guys are over a contract? Because they didn't give Deshaun Jackson, I mean, Deshaun Watson, a lot of money. And he did get hurt, and they did not look they did look worse with him in there, and opposed to having Joe Flacco, which he's not going somewhere else, too. So it means a lot by how these numbers add up on these contracts and the years and the dollar amount. So let's just see what happens and we'll go from there. But that's my take guys. Um, please, please keep on subscribing. Please keep showing love. I appreciate everything you guys have been doing. I wish I can get my thing monetized, but it's like I'm having the hardest battle with that. But nonetheless guys, love you, peace.